a little deeper into that, okay? <laughs> yeah, like, okay. It was, you went from Because, you know, Marty, we've had time to process it and think about certain things. You went from Marty to North Turner. But, right? but remember, who's the offense coordinator? You guys remember at that time? Cam Cameron. Oh, don't say that. Did, did he not here. get, what, what job did he get right after we lost? He came and be my head coach, and that is terrible. <laughs> so, in my mind, did we just throw the game for a head coaching job? Ooh. Did so, we just? So you so you say get, let's finish now. If we lose now, I get to go take my interviews. I get to go take a job. You play football a certain way. If you're up by 11, mm -hmm. or if you're up in the second half, Freddie T, what we doing? Tote that thing. We toting that it. thing. Yep. How do I not get the ball? Lorenzo said, uh, Lonil said, that if you'd have got it more in the second half, y'all win the game. And that's why I said we have all had a chance to think about this stuff, process it, and the fact that, you know, someone gets it right after we lose. Guys, I appreciate everything. You know, you guys play hard for me. We're going to take this Miami job. What? Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Yet some of y'all kept telling me I was crazy. It was a conspiracy theory when I brought up the fact that Dan Quinn sabotaged the Dallas Cowboys in the game against the Green Bay Packers in the playoffs. You can call it whatever you want. Copium, I don't care what you call it. Dan Quinn had a job lined up. He knew that if his team that he was currently on made a deep playoff run, there was a higher chance that all the jobs that he could potentially take would be filled. Let's keep it a buck, man. Y'all keep separating football and professional sports and these athletes from reality and real life and acting like they ain't human beings. Just like you or me. If I had a job lined up that was a promotion, that was for sure going to put my family in a better situation, that was going to equal me having more control over my own success, I get a bigger paycheck and my family and, and everything else is just looked at in higher regard because I'm coming in is this going to be the savior to a lost franchise. I had these types of jobs lined up, right? Are you telling me that if that job didn't have a time limit on it because I had to hurry up and leave my other job. I could only have a one week notice. Instead of giving a full two week notice, I had to give a one week notice. Are you telling me that out of obligation to your current job or you like your job so much, you gonna miss out on your new opportunity and still try to give a two week notice? No! Dan Quinn was not interested in extending the Dallas Cowboys season, and it's as simple as that. I don't care what none of y'all saying. We got professional athletes that played for these dudes, that played for these teams, that have experienced similar situations. We take wisdom from these guys when they're coming from a genuine place. And there's no agenda attached to it. LT has nothing to gain by coming out and saying something like this. He's only going to be looked at as a conspiracy theorist. He's probably going to be vilified a little bit because he's accusing this old offensive coordinator for throwing the game, essentially. He has nothing to gain from this. This was years and years and years ago. Even had they won that game, there's no guarantee they would have won the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? So he has nothing to gain from this outside of him just speaking and his objective and honest truth based off of what he experienced and what he felt like based off of what he heard from the guy that Dan Quinn said. He said in the interview, he said very similar things from what Cam Cameron said to the Chargers before he left. Oh, the guys played hard for me. I, I appreciated some of these guys. I had a good relationship with some of these guys. I want to come back and do a good job for these guys. But then a better opportunity opened up. And if the Cowboys season had extended the pun where it was already going, if it had went longer than the wild card, let's say they made it to the NFC Championship, would that commander job have still been open? Would any jobs 
have still been open by that point? That's the question. A lot of those jobs started getting filled. Head coaches had already started taking opportunities before the playoffs had even finished. To be specific, unless they were an in-house candidate, meaning Gerard Mayo, Antonio Pierce, one of the guys that got promoted from in-house or just took the interim tag off, most of the head coaching hires in the NFL happened between January 24th and January 31st. Dan Quinn was the last head coach hired in this hiring cycle. Interesting. He almost missed the cut by this much. And had the Cowboys season been extended a couple of weeks, he would have missed the cut to become a head coach. And even if he didn't actively throw the game, I'm willing to bet he had one eye towards that other job already, just like any other human being would do. When I say Dan Quinn threw the game, I'm not saying it in a malicious way. I'm not saying that he had some mastermind plan to just stick it to the Cowboys and stick it to all the Cowboys fans. But what I am saying is when that game started to get out of hand a little bit, he might have checked out and been like, oh, okay, well, cool. I can go ahead and start worrying about my next opportunity. Even though the offense continued to score points, the defense never got back up. And that defense has too much talent on it for something like that to happen at any time. So yes, it does leave room for doubt. And you have to sit back and wonder, huh, did Dan Quinn really give that his all? Did he care at all? Did he do what LT is suggesting Cam Cameron did in a very very almost identical situation. I don't think y'all realize how highly touted that Chargers offense was at that time with Antonio Gates and LT and Phillip Rivers in his prime. And they were some dogs. That was an exciting team. But like LT is saying, they played out of character. They played out of phase. When you're up by a certain amount of points, you play a certain type of way. You shorten the game. You don't throw the ball and continue to give the other team opportunities, chance to get back in it and save time on the clock and put the ball in harm's way. Well, on the defensive side, you don't leave people wide, butt naked, bone open. I'm being dramatic with the title of this video and saying this confirms that Dan Qu but hey, that's the business, man. Y'all got hey, it's YouTube, bro. You, everybody clickbaits on YouTube. But at the end of the day, it is still kind of proven and going to that point of, man, Dan Quinn didn't give a damn about that Green Bay game. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying he was being a malicious, evil villain. I'm saying he didn't give a damn about that Green Bay game. And it showed with the defensive game plan. It looked like he didn't even know who he was playing against, man. With that game plan he went with out there, man. Regardless of our deficiencies and the holes on that team, that defense was not 42 points bad. That defense is not 42 points bad. Regardless of what holes we need to fill. Come on, man. Let's be realistic, y'all. Either way, we steal them same old Cowboys in part because Dan Quinn threw the game. <laughs> and I'll see y'all on the next one. Golly. Calling me, texting me, paging me, asking me, am I still the ball? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still the boys. Hey, hey! Woo, up my boy, Hey, I'm still the boys.